All right. I guess we should start making plans on where to go next. We've just been in a big, big tussle with not one and not just two, but the three dragons. Dragon souls makes my skin itch. I think I may have urinated a little that time. You gave me a shock. Uh, right, Blue. As I was saying, we fought three dragons. Well, technically, only two actually fought. The one dragon that survived, that big, black, bat-winged bastard, just flew away. Because apparently he had other things to do. Now, I'm still wrapping my head around this. I thought I had enough trouble being on the Thalmor's kill list. But now, apparently, I'm also a target of these dragons. And now I'm involved with the Blades. I've heard of them. Delphine. Delphine's company. They were the bodyguards of the Septims in Cyrodiil. Not very good bodyguards, considering what happened to all of those emperors. Anyway, if my history is right, a load of them got killed by the Thalmor just before the Great War. Got their heads chopped off. Dumped in front of the Emperor and Tamriel just before the war started. In fact, I think that's what started the whole thing. Seems like Delphine still has a grudge. Well, good for her. In any case, she's our friend, I guess, in fighting the dragons. What is the difference between a knitting needle and a piece of giant's poop? I've never held a knitting needle. <laughs> that is not the answer I heard, but it is pretty funny. Good job. Right. Our Lydia is a bit more clever than you think. Anyway, Delphine here is thinking that the Thalmor may be behind the dragons. I mean, she said, who else but the Thalmor? Oh, I'll tell you who else could be behind the dragons. The dragons! Are you really saying that you can't see that that big black dragon was behind it all? I mean, the way he spoke. Well, I guess none of you understood his words, actually. Me being the dragonborn and all, I could actually understand their language. Well, I can only speak bits of it. Well, I shout bits of it. In any case, that big black bastard is our enemy. I'm fairly sure I heard the name Aldwin. This guy, I think his name was uh, Salaknir, called him out by name. And the way they were addressing each other, it seems that this Aldwin is some big hotshot among the dragons. Very weird, eh? If I were a dragon, you would terrify me. Anyway, Delphine is a blade, eh? She does not seem that sharp to me. No, she doesn't. But you know what? She still has a bit of a point. Maybe investigating the Thalmor is something good. I mean, they're a whole island full of evil wizards. I'm sure they have something on these dragons. And that just came to me. If there's some place we can learn about these dragons. All set. It's at the college. And incidentally, the college is probably 
the safest place here in, in Skyrim for me. No Thalmor or Dragon can get at me there. At least not if I hold up inside the Archmage's quarters. I mean, I'm fairly certain that the wards and spells about that place is going to make it impregnable. But then, I probably wouldn't last there a week. I'll die of boredom. So I guess he'll probably have to work on finding another way to get rid of these dragons. And perhaps a Talmor as well. In any case. Alright, I want to head to the college. Maybe to get some lessons from Feralda. So we can make full use of our new perks. Alright. I think the safest and fastest way to get to the college. Well, not the cheapest, but it's only 50 gold. We can afford it, I guess. I'll splurge. I mean, how much do we have, actually? I think we can afford it. <sighs> Salmor, dragons. But then, eh? We fought two dragons and we kicked their dragony asses. Ha! As long as the Starbo company's together, we can take on anyone. Except probably the Thalmor. Well, not the whole army of them. Anyway. Hey, hey you, you. Need a ride? Yes, of course. Where do you want to go? Winterhold, please. Climb and back and we'll be off. Alright. Come on! Oh, Alright. I guess this place is a bit of a home for us. Well, less of a home and more of a headquarters. As I said, college is probably the safest place around here. I mean, a whole cataclysm happened here and this place is still standing. I'm sure this place is warded against anything. As long as we get ourselves inside, that is. Alright. Us being the Archmage doesn't hurt at all. Alright, look at this. Everyone's uh, looking sharp as always. Oh, Mund is there. Oh, you're useless. Alright. Wait, Feralde is always there at the hall. This hall. Let's talk to her first. Alright. Why is this place always so damn dark? Alright. There you are. Hello, Miss Destruction Master. Greetings, Archmage. Yes, indeed. I am the Archmage, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, could you give me some pointers in destruction magic? I can teach you, but I won't be held responsible for what you do with the knowledge. Oh, dumb. All right, we can't do anything right now. Uh, let me see your wares, then. Spells and incantations for those with the talent to cast them. All right. Light. We already have lightning bolt, rift bolt. Well, it's weaker. Thunder crack. That's a close range blast. Hailstone. Huh. I'm not really into frost spells. Firebolt is nice. Don't I already have it? <sniffs> Crackle. Ooh. That looks good. Let's take that. Alright. Where 
Where's that book? Crackle Conjure Civilized Sorcerer. Apparently this damages us a bit if we use it. I'm not going to use it actually. Fury. Oh, he's... I forgot that we bought a lot of spells the last time. Some of that conjurer in Morthal. Thards Prison. Now what? Let's just learn all these spells. Why not? Should we learn even this? You know what? We're uh, we're an uh, adept conjurer at this point. Why not? Actually, I want to try it. Because I am a bit of a conjurer now at this point. Is it hard? It's not that hard. Alright. Right, and it wasn't that... Wasn't that bad. Yeah. Just felt a little hot under the collar. But, look at you. Whoa. Alright, um... Hello there. I mean... You're very... You're very tall. You know what? It's probably not going to work out between the two of us. There's a bit too much of a difference. I mean, you're a sort of alien race from some sort of sorceress dimension, and I'm the best mercenary in Skyrim. So I guess it, it, we, it'll never work out. But you know what? I'd like to get to know you over some uh, tea or... Uh, all right, fine. Anyway, let's head on to the Archmage's quarters. Story of my damn life. Ah, look at this. Our former classmates. Oh, looking so busy. Cesargo <laughs> continues to struggle with wards. You have time to practice? Maybe later. I'm sort of busy now. Cesargo understands. You hesitate because you know Cesargo will be better than you. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> you are such a cheeky cat. Hey there, Gisargo. Gisargo is eager to hear how these scrolls are working. Oh. Um. Oh, don't worry. I'll get to it. Uh, just keep on with your studies. Gisargo always worked on how well his scrolls work. Yes, I know. Oh. I forgot all about those. <sighs> now what we did promise. I have to find out where there is a bit of undead to use them on, right? Alright. Our little Sanctum Sanctorum. Here no one can get at us. I think by virtue of us being the Archmage, this place is obligated to protect us. As far as I know. Anyway... Everybody, everybody, where's everybody? Lydia, Ilya, Lydia, what are you doing? Anyway, we'll stay here for a bit, relax for a while, kick your, well, kick your feet up or something. Blue? I thought the Thalmor were just a bunch of intolerant snappy dressers. I wonder why they are involved in this dragon business. I told you, Blue, I don't think they're actually involved. But they might know a thing or two. Because they are a bunch of intolerant, well, wizards and snappy dressers. And they tend to know things. In any case. Sure. Uh, just relax here a bit, alright? Thank you. Your hospitality is humbling. Oh, don't mention it. In fact, don't mention it at all. Alright. Ancient tablet? 
What are these things? Huh. You know what? As Arteum As I was saying part of the reason I came here was Missy from Nelos. Where did I hear that name before? I don't think I should poke on things. Archmage Savas Aran. This is a replica of device I'm sure you're familiar with. This was not easy to acquire. I expect our terms will be settled. Sincerely, Master Neloth, Mage Lord and Counselor of House Telvani. That's why I heard it. House Telvani. Neloth. He's been alive for a long time, as far as I can tell. Alright. Now there should be a load of books that should tell us about this Aldwin dragon. I mean, if the mages here don't know about it. Give me that key. No one will. I guess the books are downstairs. What's this? Empty journal? Hmm, maybe I should start writing a journal. The Travels of Velvi Starbow. It'll sell dozens. What are you doing there? Oh, yes, I told you to relax. Keep on it. Let's put away some of our weapons. Oh, I should take this to that lady in Riften. It's 3D. Pretty heavy. Should I put away the Staff of Magnus? You know what? Something like this is better off staying here. It's not really a practical weapon anyway. Alright. Maybe we should do some more enchanting. Huh. Tongs, what are these things? I don't know half of the things that are here. Alright. All we should try. Let's enchant our little ebony dagger. With disease damage. And poison damage. Ha! Alright, and use a black soul gem. What? Lesser soul, really? No. <coughs> Petty soul. Really? Alright, there. That's much like it. So, ebony dagger. Of venom. Alright. Now, if we actually manage to stab someone with this, that should cause quite a bit of damage. Alright. So, let's check out downstairs while everyone is relaxing here. See if there's anything on these dragons we can find at the Arcanaeum. All right. Do what before anything else? Let's look the part. Archmage. Ha. All right. So no one mistakes us for trespasser. 
chat describer. I'll leave it at that. All right. Oh, Phineas. May I help you, Archmage? Yes, actually. What do you have for sale? Let me see. Take a look. All right. No discount for the Archmage? No? All right. Huh. I want tomes. Is there any spell that can make our bound bow stronger? Well, it's already incredibly strong, but... Huh, maybe we should get more of these spells. Maybe we already have this. Power of the Master. Huh. I think this is a bit too advanced for us. Dramona Curl. Summons a Dramona Curl, whatever that is. When killed, a Dramona Curl is summoned under control of the killer. Really? Dramona Pit Fighter. Ooh. I'll take that. And this is the most basic of spells. Which means it's probably the most useless. This is what Ilya always casts. I think that's enough. Mm -hmm. Alright. Where is that book? Haha! <laughs> Alright. So. I wonder if we can find any books here. Orthorn! Oh, you're still alive. Alright, I'm 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 not saying that I wanted you dead, but well fancy meeting you here. May I help you, Archmage? No. Not now. Probably not ever. Just stay out of damn trouble, eh? I'm keeping an eye on you. Alright. Him and books. Scroll crafting. Well, what's this? Notice the new students. The scroll crafting station is for, of course, the crafting of scrolls. Oh, really? To create, create, create your scrolls, you need a spell tome of the spell you want scrolls of. You will then gently take pages from the tome. The tome is, of course, destroyed. In the what? This is the most useless thing ever. Why would you use a spell tome to create? Scrolls, when you can learn the spell with that tome. Legend of Red Eagle. This tale was transcribed from the memory of Clarice Vian, student of Winterhold. Elements of the legend suggest a date. First era, 1030. So as much with any oral tradition, much of it is likely a later anachronism. Two big words, but there's a location on the map about it. Explorer's Guide to Skyrim. Five stars, stars, Wabajack. Dance and Fire, da 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 da. I'm looking for a book on dragons. What's this? Restoration? Dragons, please. They're going to flight from the Thalmor. Bestial Hork attacks. Parents, she has a gentle sky to white run. Huh. Well, I have to say, it is great to have access to so many books. All of a dragon. I think we have far too many copies of a dance in fire. Cross dragon, sort of scatter, words of death. Brief history, Southern Garden, everything. Sons, Dunbar, Skyrim. Kelvin the Dragon. 
I didn't know there were so many books here. I mean, it's almost like a library. Oh, wait, what was that? There be dragons. There be dragons by Torhal Bjork. The last known sighting of a dragon in Tamriel was in the time of Tiber Septim. I think that was a long time ago, like 10 years ago. He made a pact with a few remaining dragons, swearing to protect them if they would serve him. Despite his promise, dragons were still haunted and slain. It's not clear if the last ones fled Tamriel or if they were exterminated. There's no credible story on how dragons came to be, according to Dramora, that the College of Whispers have questioned. They just were and are. Eternal, immortal, unchanging and unyielding. They are not born or hatched. They do not mate or breed. How boring. There are no known examples of dragon eggs or dragonlings. The Iliac Bay area has stories of such things, but so far, all have proven false. The eggs turned out to be eggs of other reptiles. The small dragons were merely oversized lizards, and no relation to true dragons. Although they are not born, dragons can die, which is a relief. During the Dragon War of the Marathic Era, their numbers were decimated. The Akaviri invaders of the late First Era are said to have hunted and killed scores of them before and after their defeat by Emperor Riemann. Some sources say the Akaviri brought over dragon-killing spells. Now that's something that we should really look into. Others claim they built cunning traps. One tale even speaks of a rare poison. It's well accepted that the dragon's most fearsome weapon is its fiery breath, because they could fly overhead and rain down flaming death. Archers and wizards were necessary when hunting them. Well, happy that I am an archer. It is less well known that some dragons could breathe a freezing spray of frost. Well, I've seen a dragon breathe lightning. The reports indicate that dragon might do one or the other, but not both. Most people think of dragons as mere beasts. However, logically, they must have had language in order for Tiber Septim to have negotiated with them. Indeed, the historical record is quite clear that dragons were highly intelligent. They had their own language, but could also speak the languages of men and elves. The records of Riemann's hunts contain reports of dragons that breathe or spit fire. Recently, some were unearthed that described dragons blowing freezing blasts of cold. The more fanciful tales have them summoning storms and even stopping time. These are all shouts that we can do. These should be discounted as myths and fairy tales. As Fargar would say, this book was probably written by a fool because it's all outside his or her experience, eh? Even without this most fearsome weapon, their nearly impenetrable hide and granite-like teeth and claws made them terrifying opponents. Not really that impenetrable. There's some confusion over when the last dragon was killed. It seems the last few vanished all at once. Some tales speak of a dragon king who devoured all of them. Dragon king. Rather than let mankind kill them. One of the more far-fetched stories has Tiber Septim absorbing their essences when he ascended to godhood. Although the exact cause is unknown, they are all gone. No dragon has been seen for centuries. There are few known examples of dragon bones fused with the stone and rocks of cliffs and caves. Just enough proof to make the stories undeniable. That's it. Uh, that book can do with an update. Huh, all this reading is making me hungry. Is that it? There it is. The Dragon War. Sealed by Toral Bjorik, eh? In the Meretic era, when Isgamor first set foot in Tamriel, his people brought with them a faith that worshipped animal gods. 
Certain scholars believe these primitive peoples actually worshipped the divines as we know them, just in the form of these totem animals. They deified the hawk, wolf, snake, moth, owl, whale, bear, fox, and the dragon. So that's where all those markings on the claws came from. They're signs of their gods. Every now and then you can stumble across the broken stone totems in the farther reaches of Skyrim. Foremost among all animals was the dragon. The ancient Nordic tongue, it was Drakkong. Occasionally the term Dovra, it's called Dova, it's used, but the language or derivation of that is not known. Using either name was forbidden to all except the dragon priests. Grand temples were built to honor the dragons and appease them. Many of them survive today as ancient ruins, haunted by Draugr and undead dragon priests. Dragons being dragons embraced their role as god kings over men. After all, they were were they not fashioned in Akatosh's own image? Were they not superior in every way to the hordes of small, soft creatures that worshipped them? For dragons, power equals truth. They had the power, so therefore it must be truth. Dragons granted small amounts of power to the dragon priests in exchange for absolute obedience. In turn, the dragon priests ruled men as equals to the kings. Dragons, of course, could not be bothered with actually ruling. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of creatures. In Atmora, where Iskamor and his people came from, the dragon priest demanded tribute and set down laws and codes of living that kept peace between dragons and men. In Tamriel, they were not nearly as benevolent. It's unclear if this was due to an ambitious dragon priest, or a particular dragon, or a series of weak kings. Whatever it caused, the dragon priests began to rule with an iron fist, making virtual slaves of the rest of the population. When the populace rebelled, the dragon priests retaliated. When the dragon priests could not collect the tribute or control the masses, the dragon's response was swift and brutal. So it was the dragon war began. At first, men died by the thousands. The ancient texts reveal that a few dragons took the side of men. Why they did this is not known. The priests of the nine divines claim it was Akatosh himself that intervened. From these dragons, men learned magics to use against dragons. The tide began to turn, and the dragons began to die too. The war was long and bloody. The dragon priests were overthrown, and dragons were slaughtered in large numbers. The surviving dragons scattered, choosing to live in remote places away from men. The dragon cult itself adapted and survived. They built the dragon mounds, entombing the remains of dragons that fell in the war. They believed that one day the dragons would rise again and reward the faithful. Again, interesting but not much help. Oh. Huh. Really? Ah. Uh, I guess that's it. Dragon King. Could he be that Alduin? Uh, who knows? Urag! Hello. Greetings, Archmage. Yes. Is there anything here more on about the dragons? Or on some dragon called Alduin? No? Alright, thank you. I'll do it. So, what should I do next? Well, Delphine said to come visit her back at Riverwood. But I think she'll send word first before we go there. I think we'd better stay clear of there until then. Before that, I guess we should take stock of what we could do. Uh, 
Huh. Well, actually, we have the damn horn. We should go back to the Greybeards and return this, the horn to them. And perhaps they can tell us more about the dragons. Yes. And also, we should make our way to this rich water rock so that I can get my hands on ultimate power. I think that's going to be a bit helpful against dragons, eh? Alright. But I guess before that happens, we should uh, rest here for a while, spend the night, and start fresh tomorrow. Anyway, let's have ourselves some dinner. You know what? While we're here, let's talk to Blue while things are actually a bit calm. He did say, Yes, my friend. Uh, follow me. I'm right behind you. All right. Yes. Whatever you say. All right. Now that I've cornered you, legs. you have what is on your mind? Yes. Uh, any thoughts? You're the archmage now. If anyone here crosses you, turn them into a troll's bottom. You do know the spell for that, don't you? Eh, uh, of course I do. So don't cross me, Blue. Anyway, mind if I ask you something? I am all ears. Yes. Tell me more about your past, Blue. My brother and I were adopted by a couple of retired assassins. I guess the orphanage did not do a family background check. <laughs> Go on. I was bullied by the other Khajiit children because of my unusual color and markings. My mother showed me a handy trick with a rock and a glove. I was never bothered again. Oh, you know that trick. Eh, I was taught that as well. Go on. My father showed my brother and I how to use a sword. My mother taught us the bow. Happy childhood memories. Hmm. <sighs> I grew up in Riverhold, not far from Cyrodiil. My brother and I headed for the Imperial City to find our fortune when we came of age. I found love, for a time at least. My brother found death. Death? I will come to that soon. There is a little more to hear first. Alright, so what is this about love, eh? Well, now that I think about it, maybe it was not love. It was brief and, as it turned out, one-sided. Anyway, all that happened later. Huh. Kind of reminds me of a little fling I had. It was this thing with this civilized sort. Uh, anyway. Alright, uh, I guess that's enough for now. Let's have a bit of dinner and uh, rest. You are still busy? Remember to get me when you are done. Uh, don't worry. I will. You're my slave, after all. Can't very well leave you behind. All right. All right. People, I'm going to bed. Everyone just find a little corner here to get yourself some rest. We start early tomorrow. <clears throat> All right. I think I overslept. I didn't notice, but... Well, I was so damn tired after all our 
recent adventures. Anyway, time to put on our work clothes. All right. Hi, Hrothgarden. Everybody, come on. That means you too, Blue. Blue. What is on your mind? Let's go. I'm right behind you. All right. Come on, my dear. Rest time is over. All right, um, on second thought, why don't we stay for lunch? 